Sometimes I look at the Warhammer webshop and a manager just screams at me to become a conversion. And I definitely had that with this one. Kretusa the Crone Seer. It's from Age of Sigmar, the Daughters of Cain. And it just screams at me that it wants to be a Zinj demon or some kind of Zinj character, a hero. 440k, 4 Age of Sigmar, I don't know yet. I'm just gonna use this as a base and we'll see where we go. So let's take a look at the sprue and see which bits are easy to use, which is hard to use. Now, first of all, the wings, they stand out and they are fantastic. The way they are in the sprue, they're just completely detached from the body. And you just have these little knobs here on the back that you use to glue to the back. That's amazing, really good news. Also good news if you want to make another kit bash where you really want these nice feathery wings. Blood Angels, you <laughs> know, we just had the amazing Blood Angel release. This might be something cool for the Sanguinar. Hmm? Maybe, maybe actually nice angel wings. But I definitely look at the other bits and pieces and it looks like it's fairly easy to use. The base is easy, there's a bunch of crows. Perfect for Zinch, of course. The brazier is separate, so I can still leave that off and maybe do something else in front of him. Maybe some tentacles or some demon coming out, maybe some horrors, who knows. And then the face. Now, I really like the face. I really love the head with the hair hanging down. It looks really, really cool, but I feel it's not Zinch enough. You know, this needs to be some Zangor head or some, some crow head, some bird head, something there. And of course the staff, really cool, but it even has a little bit of a Zinch vibe, a little bit, but not enough. It, it's not enough of a mutated tentacled caster with three, four arms and two heads. And, you know, the standard Zinch stuff is missing here. So what I'm going to do also, oh, hang on, before I move on, the legs. The legs are too natural. I think these need to become some kind of chicken legs, some Zangor legs, something like that. Or maybe... I'm still not 100% sure. Maybe I should just use the, the body of a regular Thousand Sun Sorcerer or a Marine, a Rubric Marine. I'm first going to clip and clean and see what I can sort of push together with a little bit of poster party and see where we go. So let's talk a little bit about all the other bits and pieces I have because I just cut off the wings and the body. I got him here. And I already look at it and I think, yeah, this is too light, too little for a Thousand Sun Sorcerer. So that's not what's going to happen. Maybe it could just become a Magister for Zinch, or maybe it's just going to be something Zinch and it's not meant to be in the game. But take a look at this guy here that I have. So I have these Exalted Sorcerers and I really like this section. These three arms that are coming out of the, his shoulder here, holding a nice staff. And that's exactly the arm I want to replace on Kretusa. That's the one she has a staff as well. So if I can sort of get this on that body, I think that would be a cool mix. And then her other hand is more like a claw. And I can use this hand over here, maybe with that little puff of smoke, fire that's coming out. And sort of mix and match those two. Now I also got these, the Zangors, the Age of Sigmar Zangors. Eh, you know can also use them in 40k but these guys uh, I have a few bodies left I have a few heads left I have a bunch of weapons here as well maybe I can use some of these guys to make it look more bird like definitely one of the heads so let's see what I have so a bunch of hacking and sawing and fiddling and fitting later I am still going with her normal human legs for now the feet might change but the legs I think they are necessary one because it attaches to the cloak here to the back and there's no way I can sculpt this. I'm not good at green stuff. So this leg I definitely need. And that one, well, that's attached to the upper body. And this way, I think I can actually make her stand on the base. And if she stands on the base with just this cloak, not on the rock that she comes with, I can make her kind of fly. Yeah, something like this. I think this looks pretty cool. I think I can make her fly, have the wings up here. The arm actually took me quite a bit of cleaning, but it fits pretty well somewhere over here. And then I have the other arm, like I said, the one that is on the other side of her that I can kind of have shooting a spell, casting fire so forward like that. I think this would be pretty cool and it might become more of a changeling proxy, right? Than a demon prince. But like I said, I'm not really trying to get this to be something I can play with on the tabletop. I just want to have a cool miniature. So. I'm gonna see if I can find some better feet for her. Yeah, this is what I mean. Kind of creepy, flying, the wings are pretty good, clearly zinged, the staff clearly zinged. 
the other hand i quite like that cast i feel like a lot of miniatures that are psychers don't actually show that they're casting they're kind of not not targeting something they're just kind of moving their hands around and doing stuff but they're not shooting fireballs at their opponents i kind of like that and like i said the feet uh this one comes with a little stone attached to it because it's supposed to be you know standing on this rock that's down there that rock is gone i really like the idea of having a fly and it needs to have some sort of i don't know how, how do you call it? floating flying zinch stuff going around her because she's still casting there needs to be some sort of vortex of power here that she's maybe flying on top of or levitating from maybe some flying book as well that's attached to her i have one somewhere here on these sprues uh, like I said, legs first, legs first, because I want to want to make sure that her body looks good, and then we can start working on all the details and everything else. Legs first. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of the legs of the Zangor. See, see, they all have the same problem. They're supposed to stand flat on a base, and that just doesn't really work with the pose that this miniature has. So, I gotta find something else. Yeah, this is better. Now we're talking. These are claws from the Gene Steeler cults, the uh, acolytes and the uh, metamorphs. And these are hands, but I think I can make these work as sort of avian legs, claws that are sticking out from her feet. Let's see. Yeah, that worked. These claws, they look vicious. They look kind of avian. Uh, let me see if I can get the top-down camera to sort of get this better in, in sight. So now I think I did the base as well, and I think this works out well. I just left off the stone, cut it off, and I think I can still use it as rubble. And... It's really time for the head, and I'm gonna see what I have on my Zangor spruce. And I think I've found it already. It's this one over here with that one over there combined. You have a nice open mouth screeching avian Zangor head. Let's see if I can fit this onto the human body. But this head is so much cooler than I thought. Look, I thought it was just one head that these parts were supposed to be glued together, but it's two heads that are getting split, sort of torn apart. So I guess I'm making a baby Lord of Change out of this guy but well at least i know what it's going to be uh, so i just have to see how i can fit it up here and i'll have to cut some of this off and file some down and maybe add a little bit of green stuff here to sculpt this head onto the body here a little bit of green stuff later and he's ready to be painted i'm gonna leave the base for now and do that after i finish with him and i just want to say i would have loved to paint this guy's in sub assembly just the wings separate from the body but it doesn't really happen if you work with green stuff this needs to cure it needs to be sprayed and yes you know you have to kind of glue everything in place it is what it is let's get going because i think i got a pretty cool paint scheme for him because you see the whole bright blue and purple paint scheme that you have with a lot of the siege demons that doesn't really do it for me i am more of a black and white guy and i really like the black of the wings because it shows more of a raven rather than some siege demon but I still want some blue in here. So first, Ariman blue on this whole cloak because it's the furthest, the deepest into the miniature. Then a dry brush very heavily with Celestra gray over all the wings, followed by a wash of Dragon of Nightshade on the wings and a wash of Druki Violet on the cloak, while the body gets a wash of Targor Rage Shade. So now I've got three layers in this mini, the dark wings that will provide its own backdrop, the purple in the cloak, which is pretty decent uh, sort of feature for change, and it's a little lighter than the wings, and then the body, which will be very white and very pale skinned, and maybe with some brighter colors on the clothes, but I gotta see, like I said, I'm more of a fan of the raven imagery that change has, rather than the sort of bird of paradise. So let's see, let's let this all dry, and let's see what it looks like. It's not bad, it's not bad, but the wings are too light. And this is a problem with me. I used to paint with Dragon of Nightshade, an older recipe, and now the newer recipe works more like a shade. So it settles more in the recesses, cover less of the surface. And that means the result is much lighter than it used to be. So here I am with some Black Templar contrast paint, just painting the wings a bit more black. And with the dry brush, it will still give a nice highlight. And after this, the skin needs to get a little brighter too. So I'm just dry brushing this with some pure white and I know maybe I should have done this before I done the wash, but we'll see how this works. There, that's better. Got some more contrast now. And I don't know yet what I want to do with the cloth, so I'm ignoring that problem until I know what to do with it. And in the meantime, let's pick out some gold details, but I'm not going to use gold. I'm going to use Ushapti Bone first, followed a wash of Seraphim Sepia for the shading and then a dry brush 
Auric Armor Gold. The worst gold in existence, because it doesn't cover ever. But that's perfect for this purpose, because I don't want it to cover perfectly. I want some of that bone to shine through, because it'll make the gold look really old and worn and not so shiny in some places. You know, war gold doesn't really rust or it doesn't oxidize. And so showing how it gets old is by taking away the shine. If it's not so shiny, it's usually old and dirty and nasty. And this Auric Armor Gold is perfect for that. You can see there's still some sparkling in there, but it's definitely not nice, new, shiny gold. Now, it is time, I don't think I have a choice, I have to figure out what I'm gonna do with the cloth. And I'm just going for black in the form of Black Templar Contrast Paint, because then I still have some highlights as well. I think this will contrast well with the skin and kind of make the skin look a little bit whiter than it does now. You know, if you put something dark next to a light color, the light color starts looking even lighter. And I feel like the skin could be a little bit whiter, but yeah, we'll see, we'll see. I'll just see if I can get this done first. And I also need something for those straps on the legs. Apparently, they are also black. I like the black on the, sh on the cloth shirt, so I'm sticking with black. And now I'm taking some Druki Violet and kind of going over these mutated claws. I, I don't want them to look like the skin of the legs or the hands. I, I want them to just look a little more, I don't know, beastly, like they're not supposed to be there. So they're also a different skin color. And I'm just going to fade this purple up a little bit onto the skin to sort of signify the growth of this mutation. Uh, I'm not doing that with the claws, I want to keep them white, I like those how they are. Uh, next up, back to Seraphim Sepia for the beak. I kind of want to make them look yellowish, like I said, the crow aesthetic more than the sort of peacock aesthetic. And a yellow beak is part of that, but I don't want to make it too strong, I don't want to make it just purely yellow. So I'm sticking with some Seraphim Sepia. And all of this, I mean this is mutated flesh sort of ripping the head apart in two. I need some gore there of course, but I want to work a little bit on a few details. And I'll show you the results after, because this is all just this little bit paint there, a little bit there, a little bit there, a little bit there. Who wants to watch that? So I'll show you just before I start doing the gore. So what do we have? Uh, pretty much everything is done. The skin, I did some Gilligan Flesh with contrast paint, some Frost Heart for the blue, the magic effects and the eyes, also the eyes on the staff here. The horns got a little bit of Agrax Earth shade and then the, the skin here dried up, so it's now nice Druki Violet and the claws. They're black with a little bit of gloss varnish on them because the gloss varnish makes it look nice and shiny, so it makes it look more like vicious talons rather than sort of blackish nails. Time for some blood and gore. And for this, I'm just gonna keep it pretty simple because I think it looks pretty fresh, this wound, the head splitting. It might just be mutating, but I'm just gonna take some blood for the blood god and water it down a lot and try to get it into some of these recesses and just try to make it look like this wasn't a happy mutation. That, that beak open like that, that is not a war cry. That is a scream of absolute pain and terror. So just getting some of this blood here into the recesses mainly and let some of the upper parts stay out. And then it's time for the base. And again, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple because I feel like otherwise the miniature might just disappear if I do too much with the base. So this here is the base of the actual crone here and I'm gonna place it, but I'm gonna place it off center because the position of the mini is off center as well. So if I put this sort of here exactly on the edge, then I take these two pieces, which are the beam that was supposed to be up here, and I'm just gonna glue them like that. And then I have this little piece. And uh, this piece here, that comes from the sorceress, the exalted sorceress of Zinch from the Thousand Suns. And it's a nice little sort of magical little puff of fire, I guess, I don't know. And that just goes right in the middle here, just to give the base a little bit of magic, a little bit of Zinch as well, because without it, it doesn't look Zinch enough. So, time to spray and paint. Starting with a quick dry brush of Celestra Grey all over the base, just to pick out some details and then to wash with some diluted black Templar contrast paint because it needs to be diluted because otherwise it gets too dark. Some Astro Granite Debris because it's nice and grey and I think after this I can wash it all with the same color, namely Slimy Grime Dark from AK Interactive. This stuff makes it look like it's kind of mossy and getting wet. And that way I can make the rocks look like they're different than the crows, because right now they're just painted the exact same way. And this way also shows a little bit of age. Not all rocks are perfectly clean looking and perfectly without any moss growth on there. Now I pick out a couple more details on this base and then I think it's already pretty much done, but it just needs a little bit of magic. And my baby Lord of Change is done. 
I'm really happy with the result. It looks cool. I achieved what I wanted to achieve, which was more like a raven aesthetic, the crows, the, the black wings rather than the peacock wings. And still pretty grim dark, nasty, that whole head that is splitting. It looks really cool. And definitely Zinch. You can see this from a mile away. It's Zinch. There's no doubt about it. And I'm happy I can play him now as a demon prince. And maybe this might just be the start of a thousand suns army. Who knows? If you enjoyed this video, you might enjoy this one next. <laughs>